picture today. And I've requested Harrison to give us a little update on what's going on with the kids' ministry. So come on up, uh, Harrison. Well, I'm not speaking today. It's just an uh, announcement, I guess, update. update. So don't worry. <laughs> just a little bit of joke. So I have my uh, notes here. Um, so my name is Harrison. If you never met me, my name is Harrison. I'm actually a representative of, like, uh, Catch the Fire Mississauga Kids Ministry. So... We work together with Rohan and Blessies to basically teach our kids about, oh, it's there, okay. So, yeah, we basically, like, during the meetings, then usually, like, what happened today, we brought the kids to the back, and basically, this is what we do. We, we are trying to have fun. Um, maybe you can skip to the next one where we have, like, the, yeah, so... Um, so basically, Rohan and me is responsible for the kindergarten kids and above, and Bliss is helping usually with the preschool kid. So, and what we're trying to teach to the kids are basically this. I kind of like stole it, not stole it, but I'm referenced it from the Cast the Fire Ministry in Toronto. So they have this, and we'll try to bring this to our kids. So if you're wondering, what are they teaching in the back? What are they doing? Like, it looks like they're having fun. No, we're trying to teach the kid about the Bible. We're trying to teach the children about the Father's heart, Holy Spirit, how to deal with the life hurts. At the same time, we're trying to teach the children about the revivals. So not only we're having games, having fun, but we'll try to do this. We'll try to apply this in our teaching every single day. Um, so what do we teach? Basically, we want our children. Um, this is the mission from the Catch Fire Toronto, and I brought it, and I'm kind of like applied it in our kids, uh, kids minister as well. So I kind of like have a cheat sheet here. So we want our children to encounter God, experience His love, so they can continue to walk in His love and give it away to the world. So I would like to have like the childrens that we teach to learn more about Jesus and and to understand about like the Father, to understand about the Holy Spirit. We've done like a little bit of like teaching about the Holy Spirit. We've done the teaching about the how do you listen to the Holy Spirit. I given examples for like uh, I made the I don't have the I don't have like the pictures, but then I made like something like a telephone where like a cable telephone and like that's basically how do you hear the Holy Spirit. You don't see the face, but you hear the voice. That's how you listen to the Holy Spirit. You have to understand that Holy Spirit, like, this is just an example. It basically, in, when you're on the phone call, you, how do you know that that's your father is calling? How do you know that that's your mother is calling? You, you aware of this voice, right? You know, you understood. That's basically the same thing with the Holy Spirit. So that's the examples of what we are actually trying to teach in the kids' ministry update. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, Bernie, you can go back to the pictures. So another thing is after the teaching, we're trying to, like, have a fun. So we're trying to kind of, like, have some craft. Uh, this is, like, the runs. We did, like, a pictures. And the activities that we do is should be, like, we'll try to make it, like, related to what the topics are. Like, we're trying to make, like, uh, telephones, like, bait from the strings because we're teaching about, like, the Holy Spirit. We're teaching about, like, how do we listen, learn, talk with the Holy Spirit. Um, so basically, yeah, we'll try to have fun, and our, our purpose is that, you know what, learning God could be fun, right? We could have, like, something that we can practically use in the world while we're learning. So we're not just reading or we're not just watching, but then there's, like, something meaning behind it. So the kids can bring brought it home and, like, show it to their parents. I think last week we had, like, this... Um, word of like fathers of the day and the reason why we brought it because like it's a father's day so yeah we're trying to bring that up to the kids um there are a few setbacks um so first of all like we cannot use the daycare area so we cannot like limited space um and since we have like a preschool and we have a kindergarten preschool have their own things preschool usually like the way we teach for the preschool is usually like we teach them how to sing uh blesses usually like use like an examples, drawings, or like uh, books, right? Um, for us, kindergarten kids, we try, uh, try to make it like a little bit more serious because they're 
have to, they tend to understand a little bit more about the topic, so I'll try to bring a little bit of like the readings and like a bit more serious, but then the setback is like they're close to each other. So sometimes the preschool kid comes to kindergarten to the MySpace, but you know what? That's fine. Okay. Another thing is I think this is the important things that I need to bring up that we actually need more volunteers. So if the young kids would like to join us, actually very welcome. And if you parents would like to help us with the kids ministry, please, please reach out to me or Pastor Faustin or Rohan or Blessy. So yeah, um, so what's next? What's next in our plan? So, in a long story short, basically we plan to have like a kids picnic, which is going in August. So uh, we had it last year. I think last year we had like a thing, but then I think on this year we have like park around here and we're pr planning to like on the week, like on the weekend we go there and like we have the uh, activities, just play games that related to the Bibles, like the teachings. Um, What's next again? I'm planning to have like maybe I know some of the kids are really good singer. They are like really good. So we might have like a like a Christmas like you know where they can bring like the kids. We can teach them like one song. Blessings like can help us with it, and then we can have them like a, you know what perform like one songs and then for the Christmas. Another thing that I noticed are like some of the kids. Some of the kids are like really talented in music, and we can introduce them actually to the music. I think. Um, actually helped me before with the uh, with the like lyrics so we can kind of like try to introduce the kids to what we do here so that they understand what we're doing too um, actually that's all for me so if your parents have any questions or suggestions of you need to follow please reach out to Mr. Faustin here or me or Rohan and Blessies one last thing before I close, I want to read it from the Matthew 19, 14 ESP. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For such, for to such belongs to the kingdom of heaven. Come so on. please bring your kids. Thank you. Come on, give them a round of applause. Isn't that amazing? Come on, let's stretch a hand towards them and let's pray for them. Come on, somebody come and help me here this morning. Yeah, come on, love, come and help me. Stretch your hand towards them, you know. Holy Spirit, we just say thank you. Thank you for Harrison. Thank you for his beautiful heart. Thank you for his heart that is so creative, so pastoral, so intuitive, so absolutely amazing that he would nurture these children in the ways of the Lord. Father, I pray that he himself is so receptive to the anointing so receptive to the presence of God. I pray, Father, that let him have a full load of your presence. Fill him up, fill him up this morning. Take it, Harrison. Take it, Harrison. Take it, Harrison. Overflow, overflow. Uh, you know, Harrison, I love, I love, I'm just seeing a, a well, a well in you, and it's a deep, 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 deep well. It's, there's a reservoir. You know, as you're pouring out, the Father's love, the Spirit of God, the things of God, I see you going to be overflowing, overflowing, because you have to give in order to receive. If not, you will dry up. And so Fosna and myself, come on church, family, let's stand, let's stand and bless him. Just one word, declare, decree one word. I just speak the promises, the faithfulness of God over your life. Faith, favor, 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 wherever you go. I bless you. Bless you. And what was amazing, I don't know if you know, the verse you read, Matthew, is in line with what Christy spoke about, you know, the little children. So, so beautiful that we are all flowing today. The Holy Spirit. Thank you. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him a round of applause. Isn't he amazing? Wow. Well, um, all those who've joined us for the very first time, welcome to Castify Mississauga. Thank you for being part of us. My name is Faustin. Um, I am married to a very good-looking woman, Marina, my wife. You know, I am the 
ugly one, he, she's the good-looking one, so that's a better way to put it. And if you would like to get more information about us, what we do, Ashwin, can you give us a wave? Um, Ashwin is our pastoral intern, so he would love to take information from you. And we have some cards at the back that he can assist you with and love to share what we do at this local church. Amen, amen, amen. Amazing. How many enjoyed the worship this morning? Wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that good? Well, you know, we are a part of a cast of our family that loves the Holy Spirit, loves what God does, loves what everything, the move of God, you know. That's what we are all about. Yeah? How many are excited? That's what we are all about. Yeah? We live in a time where the Holy Spirit is doing something incredible. Incredible. Turn to somebody and say, I want to be part of that. You know, he's doing something incredible. And that's what I am so excited all about. Because God is looking for people who he can invest his wonderful anointing and his presence. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm a kind of a person who like to be a little bit organized. You know, but today in worship, I just felt there was like a, just like a waterfall falling upon us this morning. And the anointing was so beautiful. I'm just loving it. I'm just loving it. How many say the Holy Spirit should keep coming doing that? Isn't it? Come on, we want that. You know, I'll try and see if I can get through my message today. But I just want you to know that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon us. Is upon us. Say that to yourself. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon us. Say upon us. Upon us. John, you have something to say? Yeah, sure. Come on up. Um, upon us. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing this morning. That's what he wants to do all the time. All the time. Yes. I have a bit of a testimony. Uh, the other day on Thursday, I was at a friend's place, and I was walking around on my bare feet. We had a nice lunch. And I turned around, and I didn't see the corner of uh, a wall. And I caught my foot on it. So I broke my, one of my toes, my middle toe. And I didn't think much of it, because like a toe is a toe, right? So uh, after the next day, I figured I'd put on a pair of shoes, because I, I was going out to minister. And we were ministering, and uh, the, someone got a word and said, oh, knees are going to be healed. So I've always had trouble with my knees, knees. So I said, okay, that's me. So I get up, right? Then they said, okay, and a foot too, and a foot too. So I started walking, and all of a sudden, my foot felt better. Right, because when I left it there, my foot, my toe, my middle toe, was completely purple and red, and it was twice the size. So it was it was difficult walking in my shoes. And after they said that, all of a sudden it felt great. When I got home at night, there was no purple, there was no red, and the toe was the right size, and I was feeling good. And it's like praise God, God can just heal just like that. Come on, Jesus, come on, I, Amen. Thanks, John, for sharing. Wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, come on. We are in a season where the kingdom of God is upon us and is moving. Let's not take it lightly, you know. And I want you to get excited, okay? Excitement is one of the very best things that I believe that the Holy Spirit loves, okay? The Holy Spirit moved upon Toronto in 1994, and people who were just very, um, how do I use the word, critical, just missed it. But people who completely immersed into it and enjoyed it, completely loved it, and God has been transforming lives like never before. Amen? Amen. Let's prepare our heart to give unto the Lord this morning. I want to um, encourage you that you as a local church, we as a local church, we are a very generous giver, and I want to say thank you up front. Very generous. I just got back from India about two and a half weeks ago, and some of you sowed into my life personally for my personal expenses and God just did it amazingly and I want you to understand what does that really mean we fuel the mission of what God is doing we fuel the mission of what is God is doing God can do his work on his own he doesn't really need our money but why does he wants us to participate? He wants us to participate because he wants you to become one with him. So as you give and as you sow, I want you to understand 
we together as children of the Most High God, we fuel the mission for the Holy Spirit move for the coming harvest that's upon us already. Amen? So thank you for giving. Thank you for sowing. I think how to give is upon your screen. If you're here for the very first time, we have something called an app called Church Center. Uh, it's right on our website, and you can click, look up on that and give through that or e-transfer or, or a box at the back. Thank you so much for giving. I want to teach the Word of God this morning. Are you excited to listen to the Word of God this morning? Okay, just John alone. Nobody else? Okay. All right. We are here to study the Word of God. How many love to study the Word of God? Because I believe that studying the Word of God is not like listening to one message. The Word of God needs to immerse into my spirit, it needs to immerse into my heart, and it needs to transform me. If it doesn't transform me, then I'm listening to a good podcast. That's all it comes to. But if it doesn't change my life and the life of the people around me, it's a very good teaching. Anything that I hear through the word of God needs to transform my life. So on that note, turn with me to Psalm 82. As I was meditating on the scripture, the Holy Spirit began to talk to me that Jesus was sent to this earth to invite people to follow him. That's why we're asked to become followers of Jesus. And yes, we did a fantastic job on evangelism and discipleship and, and church growth and all that is amazing. I, I, I don't want to disqualify that. But I want you to understand that what is in the heart of the Father and what, why, why was the Father drawing us all to Jesus so that we could follow him? And Psalm 82 is a wonderful scripture that was written by Asap, A-S-A-P-A, -A -A, one of the seer under David. Asap, if I'm, I'm doing a little study on him right now, was a seer. What does a seer do? A seer gets to see things into the heavenlies. He gets to see what's happening in the heaven. So Asap, who was a worship leader, but he was more than a worship leader for David. He had 122 uh, musicians of his own family members, but he dedicated his life seeking into the heavenlies, and he would bring worship into David's uh, time, and that's why that the glory of God would visit in his ministry, in his time. Why? Because Asap was listening to what the conversation was going on in heaven. Are you catching where I'm going with this? Sometime what happened, we are so drawn to strategies. We are so drawn to, let's have this discussion, which is all good. Okay, I'm a bit of a left brain, so I enjoy all that. But I think we need to tune to something what the Holy Spirit is doing in this season and in this hour. So 82, Psalm 82 is a wonderful scripture that will give you an insight of what heaven is saying. What heaven is being recorded through Asap. And if you read through it very clearly, Asap is writing as a first person. That means he's in heaven recording what conversation is happening in heaven. Okay, so let's all read through this together and try to understand. God stands in the divine assembly. The word divine assembly is in the courts of heaven. He's, in a, he's watching a setting where God the Father has assembled all the children of God, all the sons of God in the heaven. He judges among the gods. The word, the word gods in plural is divine being. That means angels and sons and daughters of God. How long will you judge unjustly who is speaking? God the Father speaking to the sons and daughters of God. And show partiality to the wicked. Vindicate the weak and the fatherless. Do justice and maintain the rights of the afflicted and destitute. Rescue the weak and needy. Rescue them from the hand of the wicked. The rulers, the word rulers is rulers on earth. Do not know, nor do they understand. They walk in the darkness. The word walk in the darkness is they are 
complacent. They are completely ignoring heaven's instruction. All the foundation of the earth, the word, the foundation of the earth is the justice system on the earth. I said, you are gods. God, the father is saying to the children of God, I say, you are gods. Indeed, all of you are sons of the most high. Nevertheless, you will die like men. You notice that? Nevertheless, you will die like men. God is in the heaven, in the courts of heaven. He's having this assembly. He's having this conversation. And he's gathered the angels and the children of God. And he's saying, don't you see what's going on on the earth? The justice system on the earth is falling apart. Don't you see the rulers of the earth are complacent and dissatisfied with the way they're living their life? But you are God. You are the son of God. You are the sons and daughters of God. Nevertheless, you will die like men and fall like any of the princes. And then it says, here is a declaration he's making. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to you belongs all the nation. Now, if you read this like this, you'll probably, well, you know, it doesn't really connect. But if you take the life of Asap and look through his eyes that he had this vision of the conversation that was going on in the heavens. Do you remember Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, that he was in the third heaven and there were inexpressible words that could not be uttered? Paul was in the conversation of what was going on in the heaven. Remember Daniel and so on. So where am I taking you with this? On this note, I want you to turn to John chapter 10, verse 35. Because Jesus uses the same scripture, particularly from Psalm 82, and he is explaining to the people of his time that you do not understand who you are, and that's the reason you do not understand me. If you read John 10, all through the scriptures you will read, they're mocking him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Jews are just mocking him and hating him because they don't understand when he says, I'm the bread of life. But look at verse 35, or look at 34. Actually, look at from 33. The Jews answered him, we are, not doing, we are not going to stone you for a good work, but for blasphemy because you are a mere man and you make yourself out to be God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. He called them gods, men to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. A deep revelation that Jesus is trying to give it to these strong, arrogant, rebellious religious group who have no clue that Jesus came down from heaven, which we all know, and he was declaring what was shared out of the heaven. And he is trying to bring revelation to them. Don't you understand you are the rulers of this earth? The same Psalm 82. Don't you understand that you're the rulers of this earth? You have been given the unction. You have been given this anointing to bring justice on this earth. And because you don't understand it, the words that has been given to you cannot be broken. Here's a revelation I want to give you while we are on this earth. If the Holy Spirit is giving you a scripture, and if it's written in the Bible, it can never be broken. Are you hearing me? If the Holy Spirit is giving you a scripture and it is written in the Bible, that means it can never be broken. If you read Numbers 23 verse 19, what God says is what he will do. What he says will never be annulled and void. Where am I going with this? I, I want you to understand that we are equally yoked with God. That's what I'm trying to help you understand. Followers of Jesus Yes, there is a concept of evangelism. Yes, there is a concept of discipleship. But who am I is what I'm trying to help you see. I'm on this pursuit for years now with the Holy Spirit that 
we are not just human beings or human doings. We are children of the Most High God. We have a citizenship of heaven. We are equally yoked with heaven. We are completely engaged with what heaven is doing right now. And if you align yourself with what heaven is doing right now, your paradigm will shift automatically by the moment. I'm just dropping into your spirit for you to meditate upon this. I just want you to recognize, yes, we can sit and listen to another set of teaching. Yes, I can listen to another set of teaching. Wasn't this guy amazing? Wasn't that guy? Yes, I am all good for that. But if it doesn't transform my life, if it doesn't transfigure my life to where I am from glory to glory, then I am only sitting and listening to a podcast. Are you hearing me, friends? Let our life become a life that represents the fullness of Christ. We cannot just keep listening to the message and keep saying, well, Christ in me, the hope of glory, Jesus. But is it, is it coming out of your life? Is it emanating out of your life? Is it, is it demonstrating out of your life? If it is not demonstrating out of your life, then the scripture, the word of God has not been written. And if it's not been written, then it's not really fulfilled in your life. Sorry if I'm sounding a little harsh today, but I really want you to absorb this because the word of God, it said here, he called them gods, men to whom the word of God came. How many have received the word of God? We all have got the word of God. But when it has been received, that means a promise of the Lord, a word of God, it cannot be broken. It cannot be broken. Now, I said all this to bring you to an understanding why Jesus operated on earth three years and how did he operate. So turn to Luke chapter 6. Jesus is the best model we have as sons and daughters of God. Everybody agree on that? Everybody agree on that? Luke chapter 6. We will see how Jesus demonstrated as a son of God and modeled it for us so that you and I can model the same way. I'm not going to take time to read all of them, but let's read a couple of scriptures. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. Now at this time Jesus went off to the mountain to pray and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. You know, that just... Settles it right there for me. I mean, praying for a half an hour, if we're struggling with it, praying for 45 minutes to an hour to two hours, they're struggling with it. Jesus spent all night in prayer to God. I wonder on that all the time. Like what he could have said all night. What do you think? What do you think he could have said all night to the Father? Or what do you think the Father could have said to him? What kind of conversation they could have had? Just think of that. All night. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody. Yesterday, Marina and I watched the f football game. And Marina and I felt like we watched too much TV today. We're like, oh gosh, that was a lot of TV we watched today. Because we watched two games back to back. You know? I don't like, are we consoling ourselves? All right, it's okay. It's, it's a soccer game. It's a soccer season. You know, you know, we were cheering some team and so on. It was all good. But the, a time was consumed. A lot of time was consumed just watching TV. You know, and I, I am not, I'm not trying you to blame you or something if you're watching TV for too long. But I'm just trying to say that sometimes we do things or on social media or whatnot, we'd spend so much of time, yet here Jesus spent all night in prayer to God. And I believe me, friends, I am not, I am equally guilty where I sometimes, I have to guard my time, how I spend. So I'm not trying to throw any stones at any one of you. But I'm just trying to say how we need to watch this. And then look what happens here. Look at verse 13. When they came, he called his disciples, watch the word, disciples, and selected 12 of them, whom he also named 
apostles. I want you to pay attention to this. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Jesus had 500 disciples. That's what it said at one time. Okay? That means he had a lot of people following him. A lot of people learning of him. So he spent all night in prayer with God and probably having conversation with God. God, you've given me a mission. Father, you've asked, given me a mission. Who are the people that you're going to give me that I need to take, go on a journey with them for three years? And the Father gives him 12 names. You can read it right there. All the 12 names are right there. You know? And, and all the 12 names, and out of that, Judas is also included. Isn't that very interesting? You know? And so... He's got all these names included in that, and he comes down the mountain. Now pay attention to these scriptures. The Holy Spirit has crafted the scriptures so beautifully through Dr. Luke. Okay? Look, look, look at this. Look at from verse 17. Then Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place, and there was a large crowd of his disciples. Do you see that? And a vast multitude of people from all over Judea and Jerusalem and coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. So, let's paint the picture here. He called out 12 out of the 500 and he named them apostles. The word apostle, they were commissioned to follow Jesus. And then he had 400 some change of disciples. And then he had a whole lot of people who wanting to get a touch from him, get healing anointing, or get healed, or get food, or whatever. The question that I often ask myself, and I like to ask you, in which group do you want to belong to? A ponder, right? Just think on this. Do I want to be part of a crowd? Oh, just, just get me healed, and then I'm good. I can go and on in my business and do life and do things what I want. Just give me the anointing. That's what disciples wanted. Or if you read John 6, 66 or something around that scripture, all the disciples left him at one point. They abandoned him. Or the 12 who said to him, whom are we to go, Lord? You have the life within you. The question that you and I need to ask, if we are called to follow Jesus then are we willing to follow him all the way through? Or do we want to just get a touch of this and a touch of that and then live our life based on whatever feels good for us? And this is, I'm pondering on my own life. Remember, my brothers and sisters, I'm not trying to bring any division, but I'm trying to help you see that Marina and I have been married, will be married for 35 years this year. But I'm accountable to the Lord on my own. Marina's accountable to the Lord on her own. I can say, but Marina didn't cook spicy curry that day. That's why I was upset and angry with her. That's not the way it works. It's like, but what about you? I'm, I invested in you. I gave you my son who laid down his life for you. It's all about me and the Lord. And that's where I am very accountable to the Lord for. And so here we see that Jesus picks up the 12 based on the conversation he had with the Father. And let me give you a little insight that I'm still exploring, and I'd like to see what you guys think. Do you think Jesus could have visited heaven while he was on earth? Yeah, there's a lot of nodding going on. Yeah, absolutely. I believe the same. If you read the Nathaniel, he tells him in John chapter 2, I think it is, you know, because you believe in me, you will see me ascending and descending from heaven. There are a lot of scriptures that if you read Philippians 2, you can re read all of that, that Jesus had this constant conversation, a travel between heaven and earth. Friends, here's the good news. I don't want to keep it till the end. That's how excited I am. We can have the same access. We can have the same privilege because Jesus Christ lives in me. If Jesus Christ lives in me and you, you and I have the same authority, the same anointing, the same opportunity, yet we rob ourselves. Do you know what we rob ourselves of? We get caught up with a spiritual orphan. 
which is Satan, the greatest spiritual orphan, who's like, don't forgive this one. Don't deal with this one. Don't do this one. Don't do that one. And he keeps pulling you away from the will of the Father. He keeps pulling you away from the will of God. But we must get aligned with the Father, get aligned with Jesus, get aligned with the Holy Spirit so that we can have equally that heaven encounter with the Father. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, Asop the seer who had revelation of heaven, we can have the same revelation in our personal life because the Holy Spirit in me, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, is the Spirit of God in me, is the very Spirit of God is with Jesus, is the same Spirit of God is with the Father. We don't have a junior Holy Spirit. We have the same Holy Spirit. I don't know I'm the only one who's getting excited about this, but I'm telling you, friends, it is time we move in that direction. I don't have time a lot to go into the rest of the scripture, but I wanted to look at the life of Paul. If you read Romans 16, which we hardly read, Paul has over 26 followers. If you read minutely, he has 26 followers. Why am I saying about that, Paul? Because Paul, a very religious man, gets encountered with the Lord and so become, he so, he's so transformed that he says, if you follow me, follow me as I follow Christ. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Follow me as I f follow Christ. What is he trying to say? He's saying, replicate me the way I am following Jesus. Our mandate upon our lives is to follow the one who's really following the Lord. My personal encouragement is follow the Lord directly. Follow the Lord directly and follow him all the way through. If you read Romans chapter 16, I made a note for myself because I'm doing a study. He had Phoebe who was just a helper to go deliver the letter. He had Priscilla and Aquila, the house church leader. The list just goes on. He had all these people dedicated to Paul and following him all the way. And then he makes one important point. He says, just follow the instruction that I'm learning from the Lord. Turn to Romans 16. I want to show you something. Wow, I have a very quiet church today. Are you guys all right? Awake? You're breathing? Yeah? Good. All right. That's good. Yeah. There's oxygen in the room. Okay, good. We're not in heaven yet, friends. Just relax. Okay? Smile. Okay? We will be in heaven. Romans chapter 16. Look at verse 17. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep your eyes on those who cause dissensions and create obstacles. My Amplified Version says, or introduce temptation for others to commit sin. Contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, turn away from them. You see that Paul is saying? Turn away from them. For such people do not serve our Lord Christ, for, but their own appetite and base desires. By smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting and the naive and the innocent. What is, why is Paul cautioning his people? Why is he doing that? Because to follow Christ all the way, I cannot get robbed by some ideology out there or some doctrine out there that will cause me to just okay, I have a second thought about this or I have a second thought about that. It requires me to be completely faithful and go all the way. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I can tell you what God did with me. Marina and I have been with Cash the Fire from 1998. We got born again Christian. You know all the story. But to this day, we made a decision and we stick to that decision that God has put us leaders above our lives, and we're going to stick with them. 
Because it doesn't matter how good people are, doesn't matter how bad people are, doesn't matter what goes wrong, doesn't matter what happens. We're going to stick with them because that's where God wants us to be. Wants us to be. You know, I spent about an hour with my spiritual father, John Honor, just on the other day over the phone. Just an hour, just talking life. And he just kept encouraging me, and we got to do this, and we got to do that, you know. And I was so encouraged. It's like, yes. And then I was talking to Steve Long at our board meeting we just had last week. You know, he's like, let's do this and let's do that. He's another man that I'm very accountable to. So I just want to help you see something, friends. If you are called to follow Christ, my question to you is, who are you following and who's following you? Who are you following and who's following you? These are the questions I ask myself. And I just want to encourage you to think about it. So because it's so dangerous. We live in a world system right now where everything is at your fingertip. Everything is at your fingertip. We can just get a whole message and like, oh, that sounds interesting. And yes, and I'm not against it. But I'm like, but where am I going? Who am I following? Who's calling me? Where is, if, if the Lord has put me in a certain place, I need to stay on that place. And I need to follow what the Lord is saying in the season of my life. I can go on reading further, but let me try to wrap it up. What do you believe in? What do you believe in? That's the question I want to ask you. In the same chapter, Romans 16, verse 25, Paul says, Now to whom was able to establish and strengthen you according to my gospel. Do you see that over there? According to my gospel. Paul made the birth and the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ as his gospel. He made it as his mandate. If I want to follow people who make that as his gospel. We want to follow people who say like, this is what we're dying for. This is what going after it. That's the kind of gospel I want to talk about. You know, I don't want to brag about John Arnold, but he's turning, I think, 83 or something. Right, Marina? 83, 84, John? Yeah, he's turning 83, 84. We were planning a thousand pastors conference in Kerala next year. And John's like, I want to come. I can't tell him that don't come because it's, you know, it's, it's. he's like, no, I want to come. I want to be there. And I want to like, I mean, he's so excited to be there. You know, thousand pastors are going to be there. And the, the pastor that I'm working with, Raisin, he wants to bring another group of pastors from North India. They're very impoverished. They're poor. And he wants to bring them over. Can we work this out? And I say, yeah, let's do it. I want to hang around those kind of people. You want to hang around with those kind of people because the gospel has to become yours and you need to personalize it for yourself. That's what gospel is all about. It's not meant to be just read on a Sunday or just at the preaching moment. It is a personal gospel that Paul made it. He made it a mandate. That's why these 26 people followed him. They're like, man, it's worth dying for with Paul. Sorry, I get too excited when I preach. Forgive me if you're just hearing me for the first time. Wow, Holy Spirit. Let me end with this. Let's go back to John chapter 10. How many are excited you're alive in the best season of your life? I believe we are alive in the best season of our life. If you ever believe any time is one not the good time, now this is the best time you're living in. God ordained a time right now. No other time was perfect than this time that the Lord kept you in. And I want to close with this. Who is the follower of Jesus? And what does it mean to be the follower of Jesus? What is it called to be a follower of Jesus? In John 10 verse 35 and 36, which I read to you, he called them God's men to whom the word of God came. And the scripture cannot be broken. This scripture... 
that you and I read daily, when you begin to apply it on your life daily, 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 when you begin to read on it daily, when it knows it cannot be broken, you have been just ordained with the word of God. You have been just ordained just now with the word of God. That means God in heaven is said, I've given it to him. I've given it to her. There's a mandate upon him. And God begins to furnish. Heaven backs you up, my brothers and sisters. I want you to know this. Heaven will back you up because it is in the mandate of heaven that the kingdom of heaven must become the kingdom of this world. It's in book of Revelation. The kingdom of heaven must become the kingdom of this world. So when I'm in alignment with the kingdom of heaven, God backs you up with people. God backs you up with resources. God backs you up with that one. All I have to do is follow. All I have to do is just follow. Romans 8, 14. All those who allow themselves to be led. The challenge we have, we don't want to be led. We want to lead. We want to have our own ideology. We want to have our own mindset. All those who allow themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. That it is the heart of the Holy Spirit that He constantly wants to take you back to the heart of the Father. Constantly wants to take you back to the heart of the Father and say to you, you are a son, you are a daughter, and here is a mandate upon you that God will back you up for the work He's called you to do. Let's do... One more scripture. John 17, verse 18. Are you loving all these scriptures? I want to stick to the word apostle. While I'm on this, I want to help you see something that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me and Marina. That this church is now an Antioch church. A church that will be sent a church that will be commissioning people, a church that will do things that we have never done before. That's the church we are in right now. We are an Antioch church, and I'm believing that we are going to become an apostolic center, that God is going to move upon our lives and going to use people like you and me and send us out to the nations of the world. You know, where did FM go? FM just talked about Thomas, who was doubting the Lord. About, about, the thing, about the nail on his hand and on his thing, what not. Is a Thomas who doubted the Lord transformed Kerala. Does every person in, in Kerala is a Thomas now? Last name is Thomas. I don't understand how that works. <laughs> Either they're Thomas George or George Thomas. It's just, it just works out. They worked it out so well, you know? And it is so amazing that I go there. I have never felt so encouraged when I was at this time. There's a group of people that the Lord has put me with. I'm like, wow, these groups operate so differently. They have no faith issue. That's what I noticed. They have no money issue. They don't have the money, but they don't have any money issue. They're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's bring the 500 pastors. So here in John 17 verse 18, Jesus is praying to the Father Praying to the Father. Just as you commissioned me, the word commission, just as you apostled me and sent me into the world, I also commissioned them and sent them. We are sent by the one who was sent. Jesus was sent and we are sent by the one who was sent. We're going to follow the Lord and we're going to identify people in our life who follow the Lord. Look at verse 20. I do not pray for these alone. That's you and I right there included. But also for those who believe and trust in me through their message. How many believe in Jesus? Every hand should go up. If you're in this room, you've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. My encouragement to you is that don't walk away fully committing your life to the Lord. Yavin, do you want to come up and let's kind of wrap this up with this wonderful worship song that I felt. Let's all stand. While Yavin is coming up, 
Some of you may know this story. Some of you may not know this story. You remember the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. You know, recently we took 50 Assam pastors. That's what had happened, this story. Catch the fire, Mr. Saga. We as a church, we transported 50 pastors from Assam. We put them in Catch the fire, Nagaland, where we have our building that can accommodate about 80 people. We had Ramesh and LC, the pastors for Catch the fire, Toronto East Scarborough. We send them and we send our pastor from India, Pastor Suresh from Catch the fire, Coimbatore, and we said, would you go and minister to them for three days on Father Heart School? Because I believe what the seed that we have sown in Assam is the story that I'm about to tell you. For some of you may know this story. I heard this story and, and I may miss the timing and dates and whatnot. Apparently in the 18th century or close to the 19th century, no a American missionary went up from the Welsh revival to India and he was ministering to all these people. And while he was ministering, he ministered to this group of people who were headhunters. And he said, who's going to tell them the gospel? This my gospel, who's going to tell them? So he shares the gospel in that whole community, the whole village. And pretty much nobody believes him but one man. One man believes him and he says, I love what you just shared. He goes home and talks to his wife and his children and they all become a born again Christian. The village comes to know about it and they bring him in the middle of that little meeting they have and the head leader of that village says to him, I heard you've given up Hinduism. I heard you've now become a Christian. Is that true? And he said, yes, it is true. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. And the leader was so upset and he said, you cannot do that. And he threatened him. He said, we're going to kill your children. He said, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. They kill all his three children in front of him, in front of his wife. And he said, would you renounce right now your faith? And he said, I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. I get very emotional when I think of this because what kind of a faith this man would have? He looks and he says, I'm going to kill your wife. He said, I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. He was ready to put his faith on the line, even if it cost him his children. He was ready to put his faith on the line, even if it cost him his wife. They shot his wife. They killed his wife. He said, would you renounce right now? And he said, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Eventually, they killed him. The village leader wanted to know, a man died 2,000 years ago somewhere back in Israel. Who is this man that died that this man is willing to follow him? And he went and began to research about him. And he found out this man is the son of God, became a son of man, and now he wants us to become children of God. This is the man he died for. And he said, that's the gospel that I want to follow. That's the gospel I want to live. And that village leader said, wow. If he could lay down his life of his family for the man who died over 2,000 years ago, who was not just a man, who is not just a prophet, but he's a son of God, came down from heaven to earth to become us, for us to become sons of God and daughters of God. I want to follow that God. The entire village came to know Jesus. That's the community we sowed in just recently. My question to you and I is, 
Who are you following? And who's following you? I'd like you to think about this really nice and hard. As we sing this song, I've decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Come on, if you make that commitment, sing along with Javan. No turning back, no turning back. Oh, I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. decided to follow Jesus. If you're serious about yourself in your heart this morning and say, Lord, draw me to Jesus. John 6 says, unless the Father draws men unto me, they will never come to me. Unless the Father puts the desire in their heart, they will never come to Jesus. I'm going to request two things this morning. Prayer for your own personal life. That God draw me to Jesus every day. And I want you to pray for your family members who do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Would you put a hand on your heart this morning? And would you make a commitment to the Lord? Doesn't matter what the world is going to turn around. Doesn't matter who doesn't follow me. Doesn't matter what changes around me. I have decided to follow Jesus. Lord, here we are, Lord. Lord, we want to follow you. Father, we ask you this morning... Would you draw us to your son, Jesus? Would you cause our hearts and our mind and our spirit to be drawn to your son? And Father, we pray for those men and women in our lives who have not fully surrendered to the Lord. Father, would you put the desire in their heart to draw them to Jesus? Because Jesus said, no one comes to the Father unless through me. Father, I ask you, would you do that for us? How many would like to say, yes, do it for me, for my family. Come on, just lift your hands up and begin to pray for just a minute. Father, do it for me. Do it for my family. 
Do it for my community. Do it for my neighbor. Who are that people that you can think of right now? Call their name right now and say, God, do it for my family. Do it for me. Holy Spirit, I pray before the end of this year that our hearts will become so transformed to follow you. I pray for the end of this year that our family members who do not know Jesus and have not followed you will turn to Jesus. Come on, how many agree with me this year? Father, I believe by this year, Father, that we will see a transformation in our home, transformation in our family, transformation in our community because we have decided to follow Jesus. Let's close with this last verse again. Yavin, thank you for coming this Sunday morning. As we close, let's fellowship. We're going to fellowship in the lobby. Thank you. To follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back, oh, no turning back. The world behind me, the world behind, the cross before me, the cross before, oh, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, no turning back, oh, no turning back. Why are you sing one more time? I have this. Thank you, church family. We're all done. We're going to meet in the lobby. Uh, we encourage you to fellowship before you go home. Uh, the weather is nice. We can also meet outside a little bit. And uh, we, let's stay connected. God bless you all.